Hello everyone, today we're going to be learning about Gilbert Lujan as well as Chicano art. So Gilbert Lujan was a well-known, influential Chicano sculptor, muralist, and painter. He founded the famous Chicano collective Los Four. He was born October 16th, 1940 in French Camp, California, and he died July 24th, 2011 in Los Angeles. So Chicano art. The Chicano art movement represents groundbreaking movements by Mexican-American artists to establish a unique artistic identity in the United States. Much of the art and the artist creative Chicano art were heavily influenced by the Chicano movement, which began in the 1960s. And world building, this is very important for Mr. Lujan's work. World building is a process of constructing an imaginary world, sometimes associated with a fictional universe, developing and an imaginary setting with a coherent quality such as histories and geographies. It is a key task for many science fiction or fantasy writers and artists. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at Gilbert Lujan's world, Mongularia, and we're going to see lots of anthropomorphic animals, um, which are kind of just animals that we will see kind of like in Disney's um, Zootopia film, a very popular film. All that means is um, animals that kind of look like humans or kind of walk like humans. They're really cool. I think they're really fun, very playful. And these next scenes, look at these for a long time. You guys can stop and look at them because the Tyler one, that's the one we're taking a lot of inspiration from. So our I can statements for today are, I can learn about world building through art. I can learn about Chicano art and I can use my painting skills to create work inspired by Gilbert Lujan. The standards we're hitting today are three, five and 11. All right, everyone, remember for today, all we're going to be needing is a half sheet of paper. This is what our outcome should look like. We're going to have this really cute little bunny person, or we might want to draw one of our little dog folks. They're super cool. They're super cute. Oh my goodness. I really love these. Gilbert Lujan's work is absolutely beautiful and very inspirational. So let's go ahead and get started on our artwork. So the first thing we're going to want, we're going to want to make sure that our paper is of course, landscape today. We're gonna to wanna to draw with a crown. You could use a crown or a color pencil or a black marker, doesn't really matter. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to take my crown, I'm gonna draw a curved line below the halfway point though. You could take it nice and round, kind of straight, and I'm gonna round it back down. You can see this is still less than half the page. I want to make sure my lines are nice and dark. There you go. Nice, dark, and very crisp. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create two smaller curved lines. These are going to be like the wheel rims or wheel whales. The wheels are underneath this part. So just one curved line on the left hand side. And another curved line on the right hand side. There we go. And what we're going to do next, we're going to draw our little windshield. It's just two diagonal lines connected with each other. So diagonal line, straight line, diagonal line down. Mine kind of looks funny. It's okay. It kind of looks like a D, but that's all right. My next one, a nice diagonal line. I'm going to add four. I thought I added three. I'm going to add four little bumps. One, two, three, four. Make sure it's connected. One, two, three, four. I'm going to draw little diagonal lines inside to make sure it looks like it's folded up. Kind of crunchy. All right. And for our little folks, like I said, we can either draw the dog or we could draw the bat rabbit. I'm going to draw the little dog first. So I'm going to do, I'm going to add a nice little round part for the nose, very round. I'm going to give it a straight line, go up with a nice like little half circle, go back down. It's just a rectangle. I'm going to go nice and round. There you go. You can kind of see it looks a little hard at first, but all it really is is a round rectangle attached to a half circle. There we go. I'm going to add two triangles for my ears. A really cool dog. You could probably make this a cat if you wanted to as well. 
I could do two diagonal lines, they're parallel, and round off his shoulders. There we go. Just like that. A nice curved line. Add a little circle for the nose. Give my guy a nice little smile. And just give him a little eyeball. There you go. You can add a little iris in there if you like. All right. And for the rabbit. The rabbit's super easy, so if you want to do the rabbit, you should have waited until now. Great job. I love the rabbit. Super, super easy. All it is is a oval on its side. Just like that. And the ears are also two ovals. One. My ears are kind of two different shapes, but that's okay. Draw a little oval for the eye, a little circle for the nose, and I'm gonna give my guy a little smile too. Whoop. And the bottom part is the same way as a dog. Two diagonal parallel lines, and I'm just gonna give it a nice curve for its arm and shoulder. There we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Now for the background. The background is not going to be too hard. Like I said, we can always go back and look at some of Gilbert Lujan's work. All I'm going to do is create some storefronts. I just do that by making a nice vertical line. I'm going to add another vertical line. I'm going to add some like windows or doors, however I want to. That's a door. I'm going to make a rectangle up here. I can write shop or I can write what kind of store it is. It could be a candy store, it can be a shoe store. Add some nice big rectangles for some doors. I always draw behind my behind my animal. I'm not gonna draw through things. I wanna make sure that this looks like the background. I'm gonna draw another rectangle for the storefront top. And I'm gonna kinda just give this a nice little rectangle shape. You can add all types of designs. I'm going to write shop on here. You don't have to write shop on there. It's going to be okay. You could give this one a nice like little glare. It's just some zigzags. Zigzags. There you go. Zigzags. Nothing too fancy. There we are. You can also add a door. And a little handle to your car. Forgot to add it on mine, but you're more than welcome to add those little details. All right, for our watercolor, remember, I want you to take out your hand and very gently, very gently rub your brush on there in little circles. Very gentle, very gentle, very gentle, like you're tickling your hand. I want you to take your actual finger and you can rub it on there really hard. We want to make sure that we're being very gentle with our paint. You can see I added just a tiny bit of water. I should have a tiny puddle just like this. And my paint should be nice and smooth. So remember, our paint should be nice and smooth. You can see that it is very light. If your paint is super dark, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be too dark. It's going to take forever to dry. We want to make sure that we're fairly light. Remember, each time you go between each color, we need to make sure that we wash our brush super well. So you can kind of see, I kind of sped it up just because this painting part does take a long time. It's, it'll take, take us about 15 minutes to do. You can layer colors like I did here. But each time I'm doing something, I am making sure that I am washing my brush between each new color. There we go. You're more welcome to add more colors if you like. You can layer colors like I did. You can add little details. This is my other one that I did. Very cool, very fun. That's another one. You can see I kind of layered some colors. All right, so once again, thank you guys so much. I hope you guys had a lot of fun with this, and I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye.